There were vampires, there were werewolves, there was love. Need we say more? Bringing five Twilight movies to the screens saw actors getting concussed on set, flesh made out of cheese, blood made out of strawberry jam, driverless trucks, and we're just getting started. Why did Mackenzie Foy make a huge bonus? Why was Kristen Stewart wearing butt padding? Why was Taylor Lautner putting something in my mouth every two hours? We know you want to know, so hold on tight, because we're going twi hard. Number one, werewolves, vampires, oh my. Poor Kristen Stewart had quite the scare when she feared she was going to be attacked by an all too in character Jackson Rathbone. Helen Lutz and Peter Facinelli had to learn just how strong Rathbone was the hard way. One Take Gone Wrong saw the actor actually breaking free and knocking over Elizabeth Reeser. Seriously, dude? Number two, ooh, neck, tasty. In this case, chomping into his co-star actually wasn't so bad. That juicy hunk of flesh is actually delicious cheese. A nice perk for Pattinson. How many hunks of mozzarella are we guessing he went through? It's like a drug to me. Number three. How tough is Kellen Lutz? Well, he's tough enough to give another actor a concussion. The performers were rehearsing and got a bit too carried away, and honestly, they just missed their marks. Lutz punching too low and Rathbone not moving far enough out of the way. It took a while for the actor to actually stop and once they did, Rathbone wasn't completing full sentences, so off to the hospital he went. Come on, it's just a game. Number four, joyride, but make it tropical. Robert Pattinson not only learned how to drive a car, but a boat as well for Twilight. Although whether or not he learned how to maneuver water vehicles safely is questionable, since he did crash while filming in front of everybody. All right, so vampires, not so good with the water sports. Got it. Number five, vampires must have perfect teeth. It's a requirement, at least for the Twilight production team, since they had Pattinson get some dental work done before filming. But rebel that he is, Pattinson didn't wear his brace and ended up damaging his teeth permanently. That's the most selfish thing I'll ever do. Number six, batter up. Nikki Reed has a pretty decent swing, and what's more, our girl can hit and perform with her left hand. It was harder, but looked better on camera, so what can you do? This isn't a life I would have chosen for myself. Number seven, yikes. Come on, the first rule of being a vampire is always stretch. Evidently, Pattinson didn't get the message. The actor got the whole production into some trouble after he pulled his butt cheek during the very first shot. Number eight, really? What in the world was Kristen Stewart doing wearing butt pads in the first Twilight film? Flaunting her backside isn't a very Bella trait, but keeping it safe was key for Stewart. The pads were actually snuck in just to help soften the blow for when she had to land on the ice over and over and over. Number nine, sweet vampire tunes. You know, broody vampires make for excellent songwriters. Sweet Pattinson loved tickling those ivories so much and everyone could recognize his talent, so he got to make an already dreamy vampire even dreamier. Thanks to Nikki Reed for sneakily filming the actor playing on set to out his talent to the crew. Number 10, that's suspicious. All right, so is it normal for trucks and forks to not need drivers? Yeah, we're talking about this log truck that goes by with no human visible inside. That's weird. They meet, they act, they kiss, they fall in love. They are Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson. Who knew a long-term relationship and worldwide fame could all start just during a chemistry makeout on Katherine Hardwick's bed? I had him actually audition at my house. He might not have known exactly what he was getting himself into, but Pattinson was prepared for anything. He actually took a quarter of a Valium to calm himself down for the audition. Number 12. Twilight was surprisingly authentic at times. The production designer for New Moon actually went to meet the Quillite Executive Council, and he also happened to be given a very special gift, a drum made by a girl from there, and that drum made the cut of the film. A special tribute of appreciation to the community. Number 13, Chuck Esme, uh, sorry, sorry, Ren Esme, the horrifying animatronic doll, sorry, well, 
you know exactly what we're talking about. The creepy animatronic doll existed once upon a time, but no one in the cast or crew was into it. So thank goodness it got the boot. But not without catching oh so much cringy animatronic baby acting. Twilight, you know, it'll never die. <laughs> The ballet scene might just be the one that gets the most screen time. Almost all the screens in the movie have that scene playing on it over and over again, but since they're in the background, it's not always obvious. That's fun. Evidently, the volume was never turned up too high. Number 15. Oh yeah, good. she's rich. Mackenzie Foy really had a great payday when she booked Twilight. She got her acting fees and, of course, all the swearing penalty fees. We all got so comfortable with each other that it was okay that everyone had mouths like sailors. This was pretty handy for the young actress, who heard a whole lot of crass language, but got paid for it. Way to work the system, Foy. Number 16. How can someone get an article published in a newspaper without any writing experience? Work in an art department for a movie. Two of the authors for the Twilight newspapers, Lauren Geegan and Jeremy Stanbridge, may not be real authors, but when you work in the art department, you can make it happen. Number 17. Edward was a few decades older than Bella, so we can understand why his clothing might be a bit more expensive, but in this case, it's a bit ridiculous. Oh, she was a baby when we started. Robert Pattinson's suit was the most expensive costume used in the movie, while Kristen Stewart's prom dress cost just 20 bucks. Number 18. I spy with my little eye. A quilt. The quilt Renee gave Bella in Eclipse was still around in Breaking Dawn Part 1. It's quite sweet, really. Number 19. Look. It's hard work to look this perfectly tussled. Robert Pattinson was getting his hair trimmed once a week and twice a day, attention needed to be paid to the luscious locks, making sure they looked perfectly floppy. Remember that time Anna Kendrick remembered that time she was in Twilight? When she was, she improvised this pretty solid zombie speech. You know, hilarity ensues, so... Kendrick's improv knows no bounds. Number 21. After nearly being replaced because he wasn't buff enough, Taylor Lautner wasn't going to let himself be anything but in peak shape. Eating a lot, but also putting something in my mouth every two hours. It's hard to eat for a living. We feel you, Tay-Tay. Number 22. Unfortunately, eating 4,000 calories a day doesn't help when someone wants to gain some height. To make up for his naturally short stature, Lautner slipped in some heel lifts into his shoes so he could look just a little bit taller than Christian Stewart. And Taylor's kind of like your little brother. Reach for the stars, buddy. Number 23. While most of the people wearing contact lenses are obvious, we're looking at you, vampires. Christian Stewart stuck with a subtle look. The actress has simple brown contacts throughout the movies, except for in this perfectly rainy fight. But not because she didn't need them. This brutal rain was actually a bit of a nightmare for the actors, since it had to be so intense to be seen on camera that Stewart's contacts got totally messed up until she felt like she was literally drowning. Those eyes got tinted in post-production. Number 24. Yeah, you got that yummy, yum. Okay, so we know vampires love blood. But considering what it was made of in Twilight, we can totally understand why. Most of it was just corn syrup, water, and red dye. But the good stuff was reserved for the newborn baby. Sensitive skin leads to fake blood that was made out of delicious spreads, strawberry, and cream cheese. What are we at brunch? The baby, knowing when to take advantage of a good situation, kept trying to lick the delicious blood off of itself. Obviously, it's Edward Cullen's kid. Number 25. So instead of acknowledging that, yes, Edward Cullen could have moments of joy and glimmers of a smile. I got a different color highlighter and highlighted all the time when he frowned. But his sassy comeback wasn't going to cut it. As much as Pattinson wanted a broody Edward, the production did not, and the actor literally got a warning, letting him know that he wasn't as irreplaceable as he thought he was. I came back off, I came back off the lunch, I was like, hi! <laughs> so irritate your eyes at first. Whew, okay, so how many contact lenses did this franchise go through exactly? 
Christina Patterson had her work cut out for her, literally painting every single pair of the Volturi contacts by hand to get that perfect red. Number 27. Didn't spend a lot of time auditioning other women for Bella. Okay, well, she did spend a bit of time since Michelle Trachenberg, Lily Collins, Jennifer Lawrence, and Frances Bean Cobain also auditioned for the part. As for Edward, well, it could have been Henry Cavill, Dustin Milligan, Dave Franco, Jamie Campbell Bauer, Michael Welch, Shiloh Fernandez, and Jackson Rathbone. Kristen Stewart also almost wound up with two Twilight-related exes, since her real-life boyfriend at the time, Michael Angarano, nearly played Mike in the movies. Number 28. Can you spot the creatives? Wedding guests included various members of the production team, which was pretty smart for two reasons. Those involved with the movie could have this special scene as a sweet memory, and they saved money since they didn't have to pay for as many extras. Screenwriter Melissa Rosenberg, co-producer Bill Bannerman, and producer Wick Godfrey all dove into the Twilight world, even fabricating elaborate backstories for their temporary characters. Number 29. There were a lot of wigs in Twilight, and considering most of the feedback, no one liked them. A lot of regrets <laughs> uh, in the hair department. My hair. Nikki Reed's wig was a bit of a savior since all the dye made her natural hair fall out. But the style could be questionable. Taylor Lautner detested his long wig, Christian Stewart didn't care for the one she wore, and Pattinson once literally ripped out hair extensions because he hated them so much. Or was he just in character? Who knows? Number 30. I still wasn't entirely sure that I was gonna be an actor until after that movie. He wasn't sure he was gonna be an actor beforehand either. Sticking around turned out pretty well. It was far from easy, but gosh, was it ever memorable. What's your favorite Twilight filming secret? 